This is the northern portal of the Preston Brook Tunnel and it marks the northern boundary of the Trenton Mersey Canal. Now, if we had to choose just one canal that epitomises all that's best about English canal cruising, it would have to be the Trenton Mersey. It offers such variety. It goes through attractive open countryside and through densely wooded sections, and it passes through some fascinating old towns. Some of the buildings alongside its banks date from the very dawn of the Industrial Revolution, which of course this canal played a very big part in. The locks here at the northern end are narrow beam, and those at the southern end are wide beam, while somewhere along the route the canal actually becomes part of the River Trent itself. The canal is blessed with some very fine engineering structures. There's the magnificent Victorian Anderton boat lift, and there are the five canal tunnels from the 18th and 19th centuries. One of the prime movers of the canal was Josiah Wedgwood. He saw the enormous advantage that the canal could bring by providing cheap, safe, long-distance transport for his wares, which up to that time were being carried by pack horse with horrendous losses due to breakage. James Brindley was appointed as the Surveyor General to the canal, but much of the detailed engineering work was actually done by his son-in-law, Hugh Henschel, and by John Smeaton. The canal was to be called the Grand Trunk Canal. It formed the backbone of a waterways transport infrastructure. It connected via the Bridgewater Canal to the seaports of the Mersey and to Manchester. At the eastern end, it connected to the mighty River Trent with through navigation to the east coast ports. Contemporary with it was the Staffs and Worcester Canal, which opened up a through route to the industrial black country and to the River Severn. Together with the Coventry and Oxford canals, they formed what has become known as Brindley's Grand Cross. The official start of navigation at the northwestern end of the canal is the northern portal of the Preston Brook Tunnel, where the navigation joins the earlier Bridgewater Canal. There are three tunnels on the canal in Cheshire, the other two being at Saltersford and Barnton. They're all built to a 13-foot, 6-inch width, which won't quite allow two narrowboats to pass. For this reason, a timetable is operated at Preston Brook, the rules of which are displayed at the tunnel entrance. Preston Brook is the longest of the three tunnels, at just over two-thirds of a mile. None of the tunnels had towpaths, so all the boats were originally propelled through by legging that is, by men laying on their backs on top of the boats and walking along the sides of the tunnel. In 1864, a steam tug service was introduced, but the fumes from it were lethal in the confined and unventilated space, and there was a fatal accident. Four ventilation shafts were quickly installed. The tugboats continued to operate right up to the 1940s. The tunnel has been plagued with subsidence problems, and at one stage the house over the northern portal split completely in two. Subsequently, there were major repairs to the tunnel. Strangely, the stop lock separating the Trenton Mersey from the earlier Bridgewater Canal is at the southern end of the tunnel, some three quarters of a mile from the true junction. Just alongside the lock, the attractive canopied dry dock is home to boat builder Tim Leach. The canal follows the valley of the River Weaver on a contour about 60 feet above the valley floor. Occasionally, one is rewarded with a magnificent view of the river below, as here at Saltersford River Lock. The Weaver is a shipping navigation engineered by that great Victorian, Sir Edward Leader Williams. The road swing bridge here at Acton, with its control tower, is typical of his work. In 